Guten Tag. All right, so we're saying house, which means house. So uh, everybody write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Only it's spelled a little different. First word for the day, yes. It's spelled a little different. We're not worrying about spelling here right now. But also, it is a neutral noun. So it's that house. Um, so you're right. So there's this thing where it's like uh, things. All nouns, not only things, contents, everything. Okay, all right, all right. So, um, geez, uh, okay, so an idea. Even ideas, yeah. Uh, um, ideas uh, are feminine, by the way. D-E-D. -E -D. -E -D. Idea is a good example of a word that sounds pretty similar in German, E-D. It, oh, you're not, spe I thought you are spelling something there for a second. It, okay, so it's basically idea, idea. It's E-D. 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 E-D is idea. Yeah. And, and, and it's, fe it's female, it's D-E-D. D-E-D, so if it, when things are female, you start saying D, yeah. Yeah. and then if they're male, you say der. Dea. Dea. Yeah, dea. Dea, but it's spelled D-E-R, but you say dea. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's like dea baum. We talked about baum last time. Tree. So, so, it's, it's so trees. all trees are guys. All trees are male, I guess even the female trees. So, uh, so you can kind of remember that because the tree is kind of phallic or something. Yeah, you might write uh, right that way. Right. Like cats are female. Die Katze. Uh, all female. Die Katze. Why do they... Okay. Of course, yeah. there is a separate word for a male cat. There is a separate word for a male cat, which like for some animals, there are separate words for the male and the female animal, but not for all animals. In German, it's Die Katze. Der Kater. And, and, okay, so die Katze is the, uh, um, the but if you just talk about, cat. if you say cats in general and you're not specifying if you're talking about the male or female cat, then it's always die Katze. Die Katze, all of them. Yeah. Well, I, I guess in, uh, in the English we got, you know, uh, sometimes you talk about mankind. Mm -hmm. And then some women are like, I'm going to kick you in the nuts. Because, you know, they feel like uh, they don't want to be part of mankind. They want a new club. Humankind. <laughs> we kind of got this one all screwed up. We want so. humankind. But the human, humankind still got, like, man in built it. right in it. And, and it's like uh, they need a, uh, you know, and they don't even like the idea that female has males in it. <laughs> 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 you know? No, huh? but anyway, but yeah, I guess I guess in a way we've got some stuff that's kind of male dominated. In a way, it's like, oh yeah, we're just gonna do all the guys mixed in, and then uh, and then oh yeah, sometimes we'll like start separating out the genders, you know. But maybe it's kind of like that. I don't know. I'm making this up as I go. All right. So, uh, but house is the same, and and house is uh, houses are all neutral. Das house. Das house. So there's it's not. Male, which would be a uh, dea yes. house, and it's not female, which would be d house. That's right. It's da house. Das house. Now it gets weirder though, because the girl also is neutral. Das Mädchen. Ooh. Okay, what what's with the frown and the frown line thing? So that's um, Ms. and Mrs. Do people actually do frown line a lot? I don't think it's used very much anymore. Okay, so so and 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 then um, is is frown so it's hair? Yeah. So it's so hair. It's so hair. So oh oh. No, if you use it to address someone, you don't say the der or the d, but it it's it is frau is female and hair is male, so that makes so, sense. So all right, but on that end. So the but if you want to talk about the sir of the house or whatever, the yeah, this house. So over there, there's a there's a guy in that house. We don't know his name. Yeah. So, but we know there's a guy in there. Yeah. And so we'll say der Herr. Yeah, der Herr des Hauses. Which is basically the the master of the house. Kind of okay. Thing. All right. All right. They had his houses. But but usually it's it's like if, if we're going to refer respectfully to Sepp Holzer, we could say Guten Tag, Herr Holzer. Herr Holzer. Yeah. Okay, and that's that's pretty normal for anybody. Yeah. I know that that hair. I mean, like if somebody here said uh, Good day, Mr. Wheaton, I'd I'd kind of get feeling like they're going to sell me something. <laughs> 
<laughs> and and so I mean, like, is that what it is in Germany? If I say uh, Guten Tag, Herr Holzer? No, it's pretty normal. It's pretty normal. I mean, you know, I'm not selling people anything. that you're not already close. Even people to. not selling you stuff would say that. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. And then it's like if you have no idea if a woman is married or not, you just say Frau, and exactly. they're like, that's. Safe. Unless it's That's a really, cool. really young woman, so where you're basically being polite to her by even already saying Fräulein instead of simply addressing her by the first name. But it's like it's, how young we talking about? Teenager. Teenager. So if it's yeah. a teenage girl. Yeah. You normally just address her by first name and say du. Du. Not, All right. not the formal Z. But if I'm, I mean, if I'm struggling with with learning German, then you just say Z. And the, the teenager and the, will laugh at you. The teenager will giggle and point. Ah, yeah. oh, doesn't even know the language. What an idiot. But they're probably going to do that anyway. <laughs> that's and, teenagers and, do. Yeah, that's what teenagers <laughs> do. That's how they're wired. So, um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, um, I, I, I've made a list of some, some things some that, that hopefully I'll listen to this podcast, you know, uh, 20 times or so and, and remember, get this stuff to stick in my head. But uh, here's some important stuff. Where is the toilet? So where is the bathroom? I, so you and I talked about this a little bit, and apparently, like, um, toilet is one of those words that crosses over really great. Yeah, toilette. And then uh, if you try and talk about the bathroom, then I remember watching um, a movie that was with English guys, and they were saying, why do Americans always want to find the bathroom? <laughs> it's like the room that they actually end up with does not even have a bathtub in it. Not even, it doesn't have a shower, nothing like that. Yet that's what they were talking about. And I think that was kind of a good point. <laughs> yeah, that's the point the Germans would share. We don't, of course, we have the word for bathroom, but that would never be used to ask for where the toilet is. <laughs> <laughs> you, would, you would wind up in a room that actually has a bathtub in it. Might not have a toilet, but it would have a bathtub in it. There you go. Crazy ass American taking a bath in the middle of the day. <laughs> but they're so weird. <laughs> so okay, so so if you're looking, if, if if you gotta go, the question that typically ask is, wo ist die Toilette? Hmm? Okay. Wo, wo? Wo? That's where. Is that's where? Did we do this last time? I don't think wo? we did. Wo? No. It doesn't I don't sound think familiar. Okay. Wo? Wo? Ist? Yes, so this is like is, is just is. Yes. Okay. Die Toilette. Now, Toilette is female. Die Toilette. <laughs> it does look kind of feminine, I guess. Yeah, let's you know. not go there. Let's not go there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> now I forgot the first word already. What was Never it, Vo? Never forget that Toilette is female. Was it Vo? Vo. Vo so is... This is oh, it's spelled with a W, and all the Ws in German are pronounced. The so I would say where, but is, how is, is it? How is it spelled in German? W O. Just W O. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. Wo. Wo. Wo ist de de wo ist de toilette? Yeah. And and okay. All right. Wo ist de toilette? Um, toilette sounds French. I'm pretty sure the word comes from the French, and we don't even we, we don't even pronounce the toi like toilette or something that it would come from in German. It almost sounds more like just toilette, as if there wasn't even the I, I after the O. Okay. Toilette. All, right. All right. But if you say toilette, that'll be fine. All right. All right. Uh, do you guys use the word loo? I know in England it's loo. I don't know when you're no. 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 All right. Oh, but we use a word that's similar, and it's pro very informal, klo. Klo? Yeah, it's not rude, but it's very informal. So, klo. Wo ist das klo? Okay, so, wo ist das klo? Das. Das klo. Yeah. Uh, wo ist das klo? Yeah. And, and, and no one will be like, oh, he said that word. No. No. Uh, It'll be like, uh, oh, right, yeah. Yeah. So, so if you ask it, the, if you ask for the toiletta, you might get the fancy ba bathroom with the little soaps in it. <laughs> the <laughs> fancy toilet with the little soap. So on a permaculture course, you might as well ask for the claw and the outhouse. <laughs> the outhouse, right. The composting toilet or something, <laughs> right. So, uh, Klo, uh, uh, wo ist das 
Klo. Wo ist das Klo? Wo ist das Klo? Das ist, ist gender neutral. It's the neutral gender, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> I want the less feminine toilet. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm, I'm catching on. All right, here's an important question. Um, when is lunch? Oh, yeah, important question. Um, they do have pie in Germany, right? It's pie? Pie. Yes. Okay, all right. They do have pie. So you had to ask a question first. You had to ask, like, pie. Like, what was pie? What was that? <laughs> it's, I yeah. know there's apple strudel. Yeah, because pie here, does it also refer only to the specific baked good that's an actual pie or does it more also include this whole category of all sorts of different baked goods Just well pie, pie. so you can have chicken pot pie and, oh, and yeah. yeah and so then that's got chicken in it and then of course pizza is you know you don't really hear it very I'm much anymore pizza pie about, like cake like things but like, like I'm yeah pie is typically going to be like if you're going to have huckleberry pie and it's a pie it's a, we all know what it looks like it has right it definitely has a top sometimes has a bottom and it has something fruity in between or chicken right but it's like it's like real thick fruity yeah. you know yeah or if it's like a cream pie it's like a good inch and a half thick of of, of pie goo You know, oh, right. as that's opposed that's to like, top, like like pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pies don't have a top, typically. Um, yeah, I've never heard. Of, I've never seen a pumpkin pie with a top. So I would say that the whole pie concept is just an English or American concept. So we know <laughs> pies in in Germany, and we use the word pie. But we have so many different types of cakes that have their separate words, categories of right. baked goods that have their different words that don't even exist that you can't even find in this country. I could go on and on. About About them. Oh, <laughs> I think I found a new reason to go to Germany and hang oh, out with yes. Seth. Yes, yeah. cakes and breads are a good reason to go to Germany. Cakes, you know, I think cake isn't as good as pie. Oh, that's what you think because you haven't had cake in Germany. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Because All right. You don't, yeah. Don't think of what you can find. Oh, I've heard of German chocolate cake. Yeah, but that's something that I've only heard of in this country. It's got coconut on it, which I never thought there was much coconut growing in I don't Germany. Think this is a German cake. At all. Okay, all right, all right. So there, we, our cultural uh, education today is German chocolate cake is not it, probably it's from maybe Germany. Maybe related to the Schwarzwälder Kirschtorte. That's the tort. Tort, me being okay. a layer cake, tort, um, with cherries, kirschen, okay. from the Black Forest. So Black Forest cherry layer cake. Huh. That's an actual, very typical German t cake. Okay. Um, and maybe this German chocolate cake that you can get here is in, inspired by that, but... <laughs> Not the same. All right, all right. Gonna have to learn about cake while I'm there. But when is lunch? Oh, wann, <coughs> wann ist Mittag? Well, so Mittag is simply noon. So Mittag essen is lunch. Wann ist Mittag essen? So you guys do have lunch, right? We do have lunch. Mittag. You, you eat lunch. All right. So uh, like that's something too. <clears throat> Somebody was telling me something about like the meals over here are weird. Uh, compared to, I guess, Germany. We eat three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. What happens in Germany? We also eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but on the weekend we have another special meal, and that's a special afternoon time for eating cake. Kind of like the English in their tea time? Okay, yes, and it's with coffee. Um, but it's, it's really, if, if you invite someone for, at 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday or a Sunday, that's the expectation. It's an invitation. You call it the invitation for coffee. It means the invitation for coffee and cake. Oh. And it's a typical time slot to have people over. Okay. Like you might have them over for lunch or you might have them over for dinner or for coffee. You know, it's a little bit less committal than dinner. <laughs> A little, little easier But to it do. It means coffee with cake. Don't try to serve them only <laughs> coffee. They'll be very disappointed. Okay. All right. All oh, right. And that's what I noticed on Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving here, you have this whole big meal, and then at the end of the meal, you eat the pies. Right. Pies. And that makes no sense to me at all, because we have this special time of the day for You're eating crazy. cakes and pies. <laughs> Right? So we would eat the cake or the pie at 3 or 4 o'clock, and then later we have dinner. And a cake or a pie is never a dessert. It's always in, a, in its own separate meal slot. 
other sweet things can be eaten for dessert, but not pies or cakes. I guess we think outside of the box, and, and maybe in Germany things like really need to be in that box. Maybe. <laughs> Or maybe you just like eating pie more often. <laughs> <laughs> have a pie at lunch and at dinner. Um, I, like with Thanksgiving, I know that we have it like, some, some people have it at one o'clock in the afternoon, some at three, some at four, yeah, some totally at six, confusing. some at eight. That's totally confusing to me. It's called dinner, and then it can happen at any time. We call it freedom. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> the freedom wild. to have your Thanksgiving dinner whenever the hell you want. Okay, very good. <laughs> All right. So then, which brings us back to when is lunch? Like, okay, so I'm 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 trying to express that I'm hungry. Maybe that's what I should try to do is say I'm hungry. Um, but you know, it's it's like uh, I, I I always kind of think the polite thing to do is to say, "All right, am I going to wait for lunch? Or am I going to ditch all you guys and go get my own food?" Uh, so uh, when when is lunch seems to be the question to ask. Yep. Wann ist Mittagessen? Mittagessen. Mittagessen. Huh. Essen is either to eat or food. It can mean both. The noon food. Yeah. Ah, yeah. wann ist The noon food. Yeah. Fun. Okay. It's Mittag is midday. Yeah. Like noonish. Mittag essen. Yeah. Essen. Essen is food. Mm -hmm. Eaten. Okay. Wann, wann ist... Oh, damn. I already forgot it. Wann ist Mit Mittag essen? Essen. Essen? Yes. Wenn, wenn, wann ist Mittag essen? Yeah. And there you already almost have one, when is dinner, because that's wann ist Abendessen. You already learned Guten Abend? Did we talk about Guten Abend? I think you did, but you know, I'm oh, new Abend. at this stuff. Now that's the evening food, so... Evening food, okay. Abendessen. Wann ist Abendessen? Yes. Wann ist well, Abendessen? And another word, and it's also regionally dif different a little bit, what you call the meals, but that's kind of the most neutral way of, of asking for the meals. So some say Abendbrot, which means evening bread, and it indicates that traditionally you actually have your warm meal at lunch, and then you have breads and cold cuts and that for dinner. That would be the traditional. Oh, oh, okay, I get it, I get it, because we usually have um, your lame meal at lunchtime. Yeah. Yeah, um, but breakfast can, you can opt in for awesome breakfast or lame breakfast, but dinner's usually pretty robust. But you guys, so you're saying that normally people have lunch at dinner and dinner at lunch. If you want to say it that way, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, okay, yeah. And, um, so so uh, um, <clears throat> take, take a fair amount of time off at lunchtime? Yeah, and that's probably really also more traditionally. I think today, basically, the, the regular flow of the workday is similar to here, that you don't, it's not like maybe Southern Europe, where they really do take the siesta time. Yeah. Germany's not like that. We work hard, so, we, yeah. Germany has a 40-hour work week, right? Normal? I think 38.5 or something. Really? Yeah. Oh. I think something slightly under 40 is what many people have. Besides their six weeks of vacation. Oh, right, right, right. So uh, somebody was telling me that in France it's 35 hours per week. Yeah, good for them. And that at the same time it's like um, when, it's, when it's quitting time, you, you don't put in any extra time. It's like people will mock you, <laughs> something like that. And, and it's like, uh, and then in August, like, like most of Europe is pretty much not functioning. That's true. Yeah, it would pretty much take all Germany, of August off. Germany, the different lender, the different, uh, what is it called, lender, the different states of the German Union, because we're also a union. Okay. We have this different lender, even though know, our country is so small. But we have, I should know how many we have, at least 12, 15, something like that, probably at least 15. Um, so the time when, they, when the kids have their six weeks of summer break, Uh, rotates, so it's not all of the lender have their summer break for the kids at the same time. Just okay. to break it up a little bit and that not everything is over. Crowded. Overrun with teenagers. Yeah. Yeah. Or, right. Or elementary school kids. Okay. But, uh, but August is still all lined up? Everybody takes August off. Um, 
probably, well, no, some may have it really early. So they might have June, July, and then they're back in August, and others may have it July, August, and but everybody's oh. back in September. Oh, okay. Somebody was telling me that it's like, it's, it's kind of weird in Europe. It's like everything is, and I, I kind of, well, what about people that don't grow their own food? What do they do for food? And it's like, oh, there's like, you know, you get your little um, convenience stores. And yeah. they're still open. Well, what about those people? Don't they take that time off? Yeah, I mean, they, well, they're they're not from Europe. <laughs> that might be true in many cases. Yeah, they're they're like no, they're like from Pakistan or something, and so they kind of don't give a damn. But they're thinking, oh, August. That's when I really rake it in. Yay! But the people, the other people are like, no, August. I am definitely not working there. I mean, it's like the idea of saying you have to work in August is like. Um, I don't know, torture or something. That's like that's like unacceptably rude. I think that's really probably more stringently true in France than it is in Germany, it's, it's because because it's a little bit more stretched out by by design by having the school holiday school vacations being stretched out <coughs> like that. Okay, all right. Well, we should probably go back to learning this language. Wo wann ist Mittagessen? Wann ist Oh, jeez. Um, okay, so you just said it, didn't you? Von is Mitte? Mittag. Mittag. Essen. And Mittag is midday. Essen. Von is Mittag. Essen. Man, I am off with this. Oh, and we did dinner. When is dinner? Von is Abend. 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 Essen. <clears throat> Oh, and then there's this good old, I'm hungry or I'm thirsty. Yes. So there are actually two ways to say that. One is, uh, ich bin hungrig, which is closer to this because basically it's I am hungry. So this means, uh, this, this is literally I am hungry because ich bin is the word, comes from to be. I am hungry. Uh, ich bin ein Berliner. Yes. And then you just modify that, ich bin hungry. 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 If I just say hungry, do people know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Do I have like a sick American accent, but they get it? Ich bin hungry? Yeah, probably. And that's why that might be the easier one. The more natural one to my ear, and that might be from where I'm from, uh, it would be more natural to say, ich habe hunger. Now that is, I have hunger. Literally, but that would be more natural to my ear. But this is probably easier to remember, and everybody will understand it. So if you want to stick with. Uh, All right. Ich bin hungrig. What about thirsty? Ich bin durstig, and the same thing. Ich habe Durst. I have thirst. I have thirst. Um, <clears throat> but the but a hungry sounds like. I mean, I can do, the the American word for hungry sounds like uh, it's so close. I mean, I. Say, say hungry again. Hungry. Hungry. I, I mean, you're saying it, and I'm trying to think of, like, trying to emulate what you're saying and not say... There's a G, and the, the last letter of the word is a G. Hungry. 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 Yeah. Hungry. But it's not, it's not the, because it's a G, it's very soft. It's not one of hungry. the sounds. Hungry. So it's not deep in the throat. It's just kind of a touch of, it doesn't just end with an hung, uh, hungry, you know, it doesn't end hungry, hungry. Uh, hungry, and so it's like a light G. Yeah. Hungry, really. okay. Hungry, but if I just say hungry, they're gonna, everybody, people are gonna know, they're gonna tolerate. Okay, all right. <coughs> um, Especially if you then ask, wann ist Mittagessen? Ich bin hungry, wann ist Mittagessen? Everybody will understand. Um, wann ist Mittag? Essen. All right, and I'm I'm struggling with that one. Okay, um, and now now let's talk about okay. So in the world of permaculture, um, then uh, uh, we've got a couple of uh, things where it's kind of like we, we, you know we're, we we go into a piece of land, and the thing that we do is to say we're going to put a garden in here. And you won't have to water it. You won't have to. Uh, you won't have to irrigate it. You won't have to fertilize. You won't have to do anything with it. And it'll produce gobs of food and probably more food than a normal garden would. And and uh, with less, with, with pretty much zero work. If we do it right, you don't have to do any work at all. You just harvest. So if we're going to go and do that, one of the first things that we're going to ask is, which way is south? Because that's you know where your sun's coming from. Uh, in the colder months. So, um, uh, 
I wanted to say Vich, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> so uh, um, you'd simplify the sentence to where is South? Oh, okay, okay. So, and that's Vo. Yeah, Vo, Vo is South. Zuden. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Zuden. 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 Yeah. Zuden. 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 U. Zu. U. Uh, so I'm making the sound wrong. Yeah. U. U. Zu. Not U as if you didn't like it. U. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so not U. More U. U. Is that the same sound? Now you're saying U. No, you. I'm not saying you. Okay, maybe I can't say you. Okay. You. Zuden. Zuden. No, that was perfect. So what was I saying before? Something else. Zu Zuden. Yeah, that's Zuden. really good. Zuden is south. Yes. I don't under. Didn't I say Zuden before? No, it's slightly different. You can go back and listen. Uh, okay. <laughs> Zuden. All right. So, uh, wo ist Zuden? Where Where is South? Yes. And once I know South, I can figure the rest out from there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then another question that we need to always ask is, um, and <clears throat> is how cold does it get? And 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 this place here. How cold does it get here? But of course, there's that whole, uh, you know, they've, they've come up with this whole new way of measuring cold and warm, the uh, Celsius thing, the metric way of... Uh, <laughs> this whole new way. <laughs> yeah, well, it is, and it's French. The people in France dreamt this up. They just made it up. Yeah. And then, and then, uh, a new way that's a few hundred years old. <laughs> it is, it is a few, but it's still the new way. <laughs> I kind of like our old way, but no, the old way. It's not that there is some logic because at zero Celsius, uh, water freezes, and at a hundred Celsius, water boils. Now, there are some pretty clear markers. That's that's true. Oh, yeah, <clears throat> and, and and we've got 32 and 212. But yeah, but how, how thing, do you remember that? I still don't remember those, and I've been in the country for 18 years. We, we have culture here. <laughs> I mean, you might not think it to look at all the cement, but we have culture here. <laughs> and that's, that's one of the few bits of culture we have left, <laughs> is memorizing that 32 yeah. is where water freezes. Hang on to it. <laughs> so, so, oh, yes, yes, uh, this, this Celsius stuff is so organized and tidy, it makes so much sense. Yes, that's all true. Yes, yes, yes. But culture, culture, <laughs> we got interesting stuff here. So we're sticking to it. Okay. Actually, we're doing, we kind of do both. And so um, I, I have a vague understanding of, of converting cells. So like if it's a really hot day, it's like 30, right? That's pretty hot, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's like, uh, like I'm not going to work anymore because it's too hot. Well, it's, it's kind of getting hot. So 37 is body temperature. So uh, that's, that's another good marker to keep so, in mind. But so, okay, so 40. When you go up there, then it's getting... 30 is like room temperature. Yeah. See, how do you remember that? Yeah, no. See, I think 100, <laughs> 100 is, it's, it's like, well, that's damn hot. That's damn hot. That's our scale. Yeah. And zero, zero is us damn cold. That's damn cold. That's damn cold. <laughs> zero in Celsius is already damn cold. That's not that cold. It's, it's like, uh, you know, because if you say it's cold at, at zero, it's like, uh, put on a coat. Cause, duh. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but at, at, at zero Fahrenheit, that's damn cold. Yeah. And a coat's just not really cutting it. I don't think it gets that cold very often in Germany. Zero, fair See, enough. that's maybe that's why they like the Celsius system so much. Yeah, works for Sounds us. colder. <laughs> <laughs> it was three below. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to get colder than that for us to call it three below. <laughs> all right, so um, uh, all right, so what's uh, what's like room temperature? I oh, I think around twenty-two. Twenty-two. All right. All right. So, um, so, so 30 is warmish, 
and then 40 is like that's damn that's, hot that's damn hot yeah that's damn hot and you're you're like i'm you not working falling at, over like flies i'm not working at 40 and you know, it's like i'm gonna go and uh I'm, I'm looking for air i'm thinking about air conditioning now yeah so um <clears throat> all right um how cold does it get here the cold wird es here Oh shit! Oh, you made a long sentence. I did. It's true. <laughs> I yeah. What was I thinking? Well, there are all good words in there. I mean, useful okay. words that can be used over and over again. <laughs> well, the, the primary thing is, is that I'm trying to communicate with Seth. So V, uh, how? Uh, didn't we already have that at somewhere else? How is V? V. Oh man, this one's nothing like how. No. Uh, it's not a shortcut one. All right. Oh. All right. V. Kalt. Kalt. That one's close. That's close. Wie kalt? Yeah. Wird. That's that's just a, for, a form of to be. So Wird. But now we're talking about the future. So oh. in this sentence, this is a future form of be. If you just remember wie kalt. Is the word so, vort? Yeah. Like word is vort. The word for word. Word is vort. vort. Das vort. Das vort. Yeah. So now, so now we've got something that's like really close, but it's it's to be or not to be. Vert. Vert. Yeah. Am I saying it in a way that Seppel understands? If I say vert, is this something? Because you had an extra sound in there. Vert. Or, vert. It's, or in, vert. It's, it's, it's W-I-R-D. So vert is with, actually with T. And they sound very similar when you say them. And it's just knowing it tells you whether it's a little bit harsher, harder sound or softer sound at the end. So the T is harder and D is the softer sound. But other than that, they sound similar at the end of the word. So it's a vort. Like, mm -hmm. Even though you don't emphasize vort. the T yes. when you just say it. That's the word. Vort is that's, word. That's vort. Okay. And here it's wird. Wird. So you don't trip over your own tongue to make it a d at the end. But it is a d. Wird. Wird. Yeah. Fine. <clears throat> All right. So wird. And that's, that's um, something, something coming up in the future. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, so someday in the future. Wie kalt? Wie kalt wird? wird S. Now that's it. S. Oh. S is it. S is it. Ist is is. Yes. S is it. Okay. S. Here. We don't need to get. Uh, oh, we saved a word. Oh, saved good. Saved a word. <laughs> <laughs> caught, I caught a corner. <laughs> caught a, and here is here is here. Here is here. Oh, good. Oh, good. So I've only got to learn oh, what three words for this one, and I've already forgotten the first one. What the, the? V is how V. Kalt. Kalt. Okay, that's close. V kalt. Gert. Wird. Wird. Oh, she's V V kalt. Uh, Wert, uh, S, here. Yeah. Holy, man, okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not even gonna try it again now. I, I don't think I could do that again. <clears throat> I'm gonna listen to this over and over again. Hopefully I'll remember it that way. Wie kalt wird es hier? Wie kalt, no. Wird es hier? Wird, S hier. Wie kalt wird es hier? Okay. <clears throat> now let's talk about rainfall and precipitation. So, like, of course, you know, a lot of the deserts we're talking about stuff where we only get, like, um, uh, three inches of rain. And, and so when Sepp and I talk, if we could just talk about precipitation or rainfall, then we have a, a signal that we use where we hold our two hands apart, one above the other, to signal how much precipitation we get in the area. And so we do this all the time when talking oh, about so that. you don't need to learn the German words for that. You're already doing that with sign language. We're doing it with sign language to buy... Well, you know, and you know, you've seen Sepp talk. <laughs> he he, uh, he communicates in a large part with interpretive dance. <laughs> I mean, he does get a lot through. Sepp's the B. <laughs> he, he, he moves, he waves his hands around, and he's shaping things out as he talks. But a lot of it is, is like, uh, you know, with this one, we can bypass the interpreters. By and and um, um, because every time there's an interpreter there, first of all, my understanding is that being an interpreter is horribly exhausting. It's quite exhausting, yeah. Yeah, and I and I remember there was a lot of rotation. Most interpreters could go for like half an hour to 45 minutes, and then it's like you got to swap out the other interpreter. 
um, because it, it's just so tiring. And um, but then the other thing is, is mistakes are made, and it's like it's because and I know that I was talking to this fellow Emo, Doc, Doctor Emo, <laughs> and uh, uh, he was he was telling me that Sep does the thing where he's you know he'll like say half a sentence and wait for the translation and then say the other half. But a lot of German stuff is backwards from English stuff. Sure, you might think it's the other way around, but no, it's backwards from English. <laughs> so, so then he's like, no, I need to hear the second half to know how to say the whole thing. And, yeah. and um, uh, so he, he's like making the best of it. So then, uh, um, I don't know, I, I kind of get the impression that he's, he's cutting a lot of corners to try and like get it to all work out. And, and so things get get dropped. And I know that like, like uh, at one point in time we were talking about building berms, but the interpreter at the time was saying high bed. Mm. And um, uh, it took us a while until we figured out, you know, he kept saying high bed, high bed. And we talked about what it was and it's like, oh, you mean a berm? You know, a big pile of dirt, you know, 15 feet tall. Yeah, berm. That's what it is, berm. So it seems like there's... Um, what was the German word for that? I don't know. I don't know. It either. seemed like it was high bed. It was high bed. Hochbett. Hochbett? My... Mm. So, uh, I'm just... So we would... So whenever the, the sign language would cross the barrier a little more. I mean, you think about it, how much precipitation do you get? I mean, there's a lot of opportunity, just not only with the language conversion, but also with the, the metric conversion. Mm -hmm. And and so then the interpreter is like trying to do the math and might say three feet, but or, you know, convert a meter to three feet. But it's like three meters is actually 10 feet. And and it's like, you know, anyway, these little details start to make a difference. But if you say, if you say nine feet, it's like, oh, you're thinking, exactly nine feet. But if you say 10 feet, a lot of times it's like, oh, you know, eight to 12 feet. It's, okay, this is, now I'm getting into something that's more mathematical. <laughs> when, when, when you're talking about something and you say, oh, you know, 10 feet, maybe 20 feet. Oh. You know, but if you say nine feet, maybe 18 feet. Okay. You know, it, it's, um, oh, what do, we, what do they call it? Um, there's a mathematical word for it, um, uh, significant digits. <laughs> so if, if if you say it's it's nine point two feet, then I mean nine point two. Then and it's I don't like, mean man, it's roughly nine or roughly ten. You mean so when you say nine point two, it's like oh you know somewhere between nine point one and nine point three. Yeah. But if you say um, you know ten feet, mm, ten feet, then it's kind of like okay you know nine feet might be okay and eleven feet might be okay. You know it's around ten. But if you say nine, you know, it's like well then it's, it's got to be like somewhere between 8.5 uh, and 9.5. 11 is not okay. Well, anyway, all right. So I'm sorry. I'm, uh, so when we're talking about precipitation, we have the sign language. We hold our hands apart, and it kind of shows how much it is. So we're, when we talk about something that's, you know, a desert, so here you got like something that's like four inches. And then, and then it's like, um, um, but then it's like where Sep's at, it's, it's this much. That's about 30 inches. That's at the, at the Kramater Hoff. Um, uh, and then it's like, well, how much do you get in the summertime? And you get like, oh, about an inch in the summer. And then um, uh, things like that. Uh, um, so for a lot of the projects he's talking about, they're deserts. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, but how much of a desert is it is critically important on, what, on how you're going to go about your design. So, um, all right, so this is my long-winded way of asking how to pronounce how much precipitation is there here? Oh no, this is a big <laughs> one. Especially because precipitation is, of course, a more complicated word than the word for rain, for example. Rain is Regen. That's pretty straightforward. Precipitation is Niederschlag. Oh my. <clears throat> Niederschlag. That sounds like a, a Klingon word. <laughs> Oh, isn't there this German word that's used in, in English, for Schlagbaum, for at a border crossing, for the thing that comes down at the border? It's called Schlagbaum. I thought that's used in English. Sounds like it has the word tree in it. It does have the word tree in it. Okay. Um, so anyway, Niederschlag. Schlagen is actually to hit. Okay. I'm going to hit Nieder. And Nieder is down. So it's what comes down, basically. Niederschlag. 
All right. In the form of rain or snow, Regen oder Schnee. All right. Say so. Uh, say it one more time. Niederschlag. Niederschlag. Yes. Niederschlag is precipitation. Yeah. You can probably say I don't know if we use this word in German. Precipitation. I don't think we use it in German. No, I don't think so. Uh, okay, but precipitation is definitely a word that that Sepp's not going to know. Well, that's, he might know it, you know, like as a technical term, I could imagine that he might. I'm not sure, but the actual German word is Niederschlag. Niederschlag. All right. Uh, how much precipitation is there here? Okay, so we got the how, which I should already know, um, and I've already forgot it. What's how? How is wie, but how wie. much is wie viel? Wie viel. Wie viel. Wie viel? Viel. Viel? Yeah. Wie viel? Well, actually, this is literal. How is wie? Wie? Viel is much. Much is viel. So wie viel, but it's one word, but it's still <coughs> literal. Wie viel? Wie viel? Niederschlag. Niederschlag ist, uh, is, here. is here. That would be understandable, not... 100% grammatically correct or elegant, but understandable. Wie viel Niederschlag ist hier? Uh, perfect would be, wie viel Niederschlag fällt hier? That's how much precipitation falls. Here. Here. That. Or, or literally, if you say how much precipitation is there here, gibt es here. Could I say how much precipitation, well... How much precipitation here? Yeah. So, wie viel Niederschlag hier? I mean, I feel like there's a lot of people who come here to the United States and, and they're learning English. They're leaving out all the verbs. They're leaving out leaving oh, a at bunch least of all the be to be forms. But you can kind of you kind of get it. And yeah. then the idea is is that if I can get first step is just be able to get by, and then and then later I can like you know learn yeah. German poetry or something. Wie viel Niederschlag ist hier? Wie viel yeah. Wie viel Niederschlag hier? Yeah. Or ist hier? Wie viel Niederschlag ist hier? He'll, he'll be so impressed if you ask him that. First time you ask him that. <laughs> suddenly, suddenly he'll think I know German. Yeah. <laughs> and then I should run. And then you should run. <laughs> okay. So I should just learn this one phrase and then I'll get some kind of answer. Consider it deeply and then run. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we <laughs> we're uh, we're ready to to move on here. We're ready to, or is this about about a half hour right here? It's about an hour. I was trying to signal it to you. Okay. Okay. Well, let's 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 wrap it up then. Um, <laughs> um, uh, all right. Uh, the, the, any so uh, what's the goodbye stuff? Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen und tschüss. 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 Not juice, but tschüss. Tschüss.